Hey there, my dear friend, welcome here. A few months ago, I read Tim Ferriss's The 4-Hour Workweek, or at least like half of it. And as instructed, I made a list of all of the things I could possibly want to have or have accomplished in the next six months. The book said to just go wild and write down everything you could possibly want without filtering yourself. While some of these things I realize are totally realistically out of reach, like learning how to fly a plane or taking a solo motorcycle trip across the country or learning to weave Nishiki textiles in Kyoto, I have accomplished some of the things I wrote down. Namely, I started this YouTube channel after being terrified of this for years. I finally finished the studio space that we're in after over a year of DIY construction nightmare. And I finally bought a knitting machine after researching for what felt like forever. There are a lot more things on my list and most of them revolve around textiles or textile equipment. So today I'm going to further manifest my material desires by talking about all the fiber arts things that I want and can't afford. So I primarily spend cotton. I'm part of an organization called the Acadiana Fiber Shed that's been helping to revive a historically significant natural brown cotton plant that has been grown in southwest Louisiana for hundreds of years. The plant is called Acadian Brown Cotton, and I'll put some links in the description if you want to learn more about that. So I joined this organization just over two years ago, and of course I had to teach myself how to spin the fiber. I started on what's called a book charka. It's a smaller, portable version of the larger charka spinning wheel that has had major historical and political significance in India. I might do a video about that later on if you're interested. I learned on that because it's really great for spinning cotton. That's what it was designed for. But it's really only good for spinning single ply yarns, which is typically what they would use in India for their cloth. Most yarns you encounter for knitting, crochet, weaving as a hobby are multiple ply. So I got a more standard treadle wheel secondhand. It's a shacked matchless and it is too slow for me. Cotton needs a lot of twist, which means the wheel needs to go really fast, and this shack matchless just doesn't. Enter the electric spinning wheel. I had been fortunate enough to borrow an Ashford e-spinner 3 from my friend for probably what was way too long. I had that thing for over a year. I loved it. I spun pounds and pounds of cotton on that thing. But eventually, as all things do, our time came to an end and the e-spinner returned to its rightful home. So now I need one of my own. There are some beautiful and powerful e-spinners out there that I would definitely snatch up if I had the coin. I've got five contenders on the list today. First up is the Ashford eSpinner 3. This is the one that I borrowed, and while it worked fantastically the whole time I used it, I did have some minor issues with it. I'd often bring it with me on weekend trips, and while it was manageable, it wasn't super convenient. It was kind of large and heavy, and the bobbins only hold 8 ounces, which is fine for spinning outright, but that means that when I go to ply my yarn, I have to split my finished yarn into two separate bobbins and tie a knot in the middle, which is just sad. Plus, the aesthetics don't really do it for me. It also costs $850 new. Number 2, the Hanson Mini Spinner. This one is one of my favorites aesthetically. I mean, look at this thing but uh, they start at $1,000, and while I totally understand, your girl broke, so that one's out. Number three, the Spinolution Firefly. The main draw of this one for me is that they offer bobbins that hold up to two pounds of fiber on them, and that's more than any standard bobbin that I have seen. But again, with the price. They start at $16.50 for the wheel with the two pound bobbins. Again, I totally get it. Niche product, super high quality, but still very sad for me. <laughs> Number four is the Deadless Magpie. This one's unique because it's 3D printed and it holds a ton of fiber. The standard bobbins are said to hold over 20 ounces, and the art bobbins hold up to 48, which blows the spin illusion out of the water. This bad boy comes in at $1950. So with that, let's move on to more affordable territory, shall we? Last but not least is the Electric E-Wheel 6.0. This one is also primarily made of plastic, and its bobbins only hold 8 ounces. But I can forgive that because it only costs $289, which is an incredible price and I've heard a lot of really good things about this wheel. This I think is more feasible. Next up are electric blank winders. 
These come in three flavors, electric ball winders, electric skein winders, and electric comb winders, and I kind of want them all for some reason. I really enjoy dyeing yarn, and as I mentioned in another video, I really purchased my knitting machine so that I could use it to knit blanks to dye yarn with, which may be a little bit of a cuckoo reason to buy a whole dang knitting machine, but whatever. The only problem with my grand plan is that all I have right now is this very old dinky plastic ball winder that was a gift and I appreciate that, but she is well past her time and frankly I've grown lazy. I really don't want to have to spend hours cranking away on this rickety thing just to end up with balls of yarn that knot up as soon as you start to unwind them. So my perceived solution to this problem is to spend a lot of money I don't have and now isn't that the American dream? First up are electric ball winders. TBH, I'm not entirely sure that I actually need one of these, but the gadget hoarder within me is definitely contemplating it. It's basically just the thing that I have, but with power. The three contenders are, number one, the Ashford e-ball winder, which I really do not like to say. E-ball? Mm -mm. I'm really coming for Ashford today and I do not mean to, I'm sorry. Anyway, this one has the same base as the e-spinner, which I'm sure keeps it very well planted on the table or whatever surface you're working on, but I, I just don't like it. This one can wine balls up to 17 and a half ounces and comes in at $550. Number two is the Daedalus Roly Poly. This one is kind of the dream boat ball winder. It's got the same cool aesthetic as their e-spinners, which really speaks to the industrial designer in me. I also like how this one winds the ball in the same way as if you were using a nose to pin. It makes a really nice round ball instead of like the blocky cake that the other ball winders do. They say this one can wind balls up to 24 ounces for fingering weight yarn, which is not bad. This one, of course, being the dream that it is, comes in at $690. Number three, the Fiber Artist Supply Diva. This is the one that I would pick if I was actually convinced that I needed one. I think this one is really visually interesting as a contraption. It's got all of the elements kind of out and open so you can mechanically see what's going on. This one can hold up to one pound of fingering weight yarn and comes in at $399, which takes the cake in my book. Eh? Next are electric cone winders. This is something that I really do actually want. I use cones almost exclusively for weaving and now knitting, and I much prefer them over balls or cakes. The first contender is this big ol' industrial cone winder. One cool thing about this one, besides the fact that it is like as heavy duty as you can get, is that it has a separate place to put the skein as it unwinds. Although it is kind of massive, it weighs 65 pounds. It's on Alibaba for $290, but from what I've seen from people I know that actually own this machine is that it costs another $400 for it to ship from China. So we're looking at a total of around $700, assuming you don't get charged any like custom fees or anything. I'm not really sure how any of that works. All in all, for what it is, that's kind of not a bad price. Next up is the Dreaming Robots Cone Winder. This is from the same company that makes the electric eel wheel. This one won't be available at least until December of 2023. It's modeled after the industrial kinds of machines that have this drum part on the bottom to feed the yarn across the cone evenly. It comes with 10 plastic cones and more can be purchased later. I also think that he tested to make sure other types of cones like cardboard cones could fit on there as well. I'm personally a fan of the cardboard cones because I already have a ton lying around from cones that I've used. The price on the website isn't set in stone, but right now it's listed at $260. And last but not least, we have the Speedy Cone Winder from Joyce Knits and Sews. This one by itself is super bare bones. You have to manually feed the yarn onto the cone because it doesn't have that drum part. It basically does the same thing as the manual bobbin winder that I have now, but it uses a cone and it has power. I've got these things that came with my knitting machine and I tried to use it on my manual bobbin winder to wind a cone and it just didn't work out. I did a really bad job at manually winding the yarn onto the cone so that when it was time to wind off, all of the yarn bunched at the top and got tangled. It was a mess. Total disaster. Do not recommend. The Speedy Cone Winder costs $155 by itself and you can opt to purchase the drum part separately for an extra $150. It also comes with this really sweet handmade wooden carrying case and five cardboard cones. All in all, for $205, this is a really good deal. I don't quite have my mindset on which one of these I would purchase. It's definitely between the Dreaming Robots and the Joyce Knits and Sews. 
I like the footprint and the aesthetics of the Dreaming Robots one, but that wooden case and the price of the Joyce Knits and Sews, making it a hard decision. The last flavor in our electric winder category are electric skein winders. I'm one of those people that has the incredibly strong urge to monetize every single one of my hobbies, so of course I'm like, I like to dye yarn, therefore I should sell the yarn that I dye. I've been through the cycle lots of times and I know it doesn't end well, but that doesn't stop me from thinking about it. Even if I don't decide to sell yarn that I dye, I still want to be able to efficiently wind the yarn that I dye for personal use into hanks. And I've seen people use these machines to wind their warp sections, which would be really useful for me. So here are the skein winders that I've had my eye on. Number one, we have the Deadless Whirly Gig. This is a combination motorized skein winder and Swift that of course looks like every other Deadless product. It says in the product description that it can wind up to two pound skeins and that it can do two skeins at a time. The skein length is adjustable from 1.5 to two yards long. This winder costs $550 and I don't think it's available for purchase yet, but I'll be keeping my eye out. Next is the Ball and Skein Electric Winder. This one can do up to three skeins at a time and it has a physical revolution counter. I don't prefer the look of this one, but I don't hate it. This one comes in at $735. Finally, the most expensive and unfortunately my favorite is the Crazy Monkey Electric Skein Winder. This one also can wind up to three skeins at a time and has a maximum skein length of two yards. I believe I saw somewhere on their website that they could do a custom order of a three yard one if you wanted to, which I think I probably would do just so that I could have more options. The two yard skein winder with the three skein capacity and the revolution counter comes in at $805. Next up is a spin dryer. Now this is something that I legitimately put on our wedding registry because I want it so bad. Typically after I dye things, I'll put it in our regular washing machine on a spin cycle. This rinses and agitates the items, which takes a little bit of time and isn't always what I want. Enter the spin dryer. It does like it says, you put your stuff in there, you close the lid and it spins all that stuff so fast that it wrings out all of the water. And you don't have to worry about the dye staying in your washing machine and staining the rest of your clothes. This one's a panda spin dryer and is on Amazon right now for about $180. Now let's talk about weaving and knitting software. As you may know, I have this big ol' hunk of a loom. She's a lady, but she's not offended by being called a hunk, so you don't have to worry about that. This loom is computer assisted, which means that it will not run without software. I have a very old version of WeavePoint, which came with the loom, but it's quirky and it's missing a lot of features that I really would like to use. Now, I'm not sure that I wanna stick with WeavePoint in the future. I'm really torn between two different softwares. The other weaving software I've been eyeing is Fiberworks PCW. I used a demo version of this before I bought this big loom and I liked it just fine. I also attended the Complex Weaver seminars last summer and heard Bob Keats give an incredibly heartfelt and moving talk about the work of his late wife, Ingrid, and how they collaborated on making the software, and so it's got a really special place in my heart. Fiberworks is $250 with the drivers to run my loom, and Weavepoint is $376, so just on price alone, I am more inclined to go with Fiberworks. But like, why is Weavepoint so much more expensive? Does it have some super special functionality that I need to know about before I make my decision? I do not know. I'm also interested in knitting software, namely design in it since it's the only one I have come across. <laughs> I'd love your opinion if you happen to use one of these. I want to spend some time learning how to read and draft analog patterns before I dive into knitting software, but it's still very intriguing to me. I like the idea of designing garments digitally and being able to easily alter the measurements to get them to fit whatever person I need. So it's on the list for sure. Our next topic today is another knitting machine. Yes, I am insane. Do not come at me. So for some reason, it literally never crossed my mind to look up knitting machine YouTube videos whenever I was doing research about what kind of machine I wanted. I also ended up getting my machine at an estate sale without really knowing anything about it except that it was a standard gauge machine. I don't regret that in the slightest because I got a great deal on this machine and I have really been enjoying using it so far, but if I were to buy another one, I would want either a brother machine that works with AYAB or an electronic passive. Let's talk about Brother Electronet Machines and AYAB. I know very little about this, but from what I understand, you can hack certain Brother machines to be run by your computer in the same way that my loom is, kind of, using the software called AYAB. The appeal to me is to be able to knit non-repeating patterns across the whole bed of the machine and to have a software that's going to beep at me when I need to change colors or something. 
The problem is that the machines that this works on can be quite pricey if they're in working condition. I did see one on Facebook Marketplace for only $400 recently, but it was very far away and I am not currently prepared to welcome a new machine into my life. But one day. Another alternative is the Passup E6000 or E8000. The Passup E8000 is massive, fully automatic, and costs $10,000 or more. I'm not sure that I really want or need this, but it's out there. The E6000 is a lot like the Duomatic that I have, except that it's electronic, it's got a different stand, and you can do those large, non-repeating patterns on it. I'm also kind of interested in a circular sock machine, just because. My Passup does socks just fine, but it's huge and I couldn't bring it on a trip or even to my living room if I wanted to. They make 3D printed ones like this one from Dean and Bean that sells for $540. It's definitely not a top priority item, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Okay, the very last thing on my long list of wishful thinking is a digital jacquard hand weaving loom. The only two that I've really seen are a TC2 and an AVL Jack 3G. I want a digital jacquard loom for the same reason I want a digital jacquard knitting machine so that I can knit those big non-repeating patterns. These looms are like thirty to fifty thousand dollars. So if I ever get one, it'll probably be like when I'm very old and I'm just trying to blow through all the money I have before I die. And I plan on living to 321 years old, so it's gonna be a while. I'm super interested to hear what kinds of cool things you have on your dream wish list. It doesn't have to be fiber arts related. As always, it was an absolute pleasure to hang out with you this week. If you want to binge more of my videos, we've got some good ones coming up in the end card. Thank you for subscribing and sticking around. I'll see you in the next video.